Hi there, it's me, Teacher Mike. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the different IELTS writing task two question types. There are four in all, and uh, the purpose of the video is to give you confidence when you approach this test on the big day. I want my students to walk down that corridor, go into the exam room with a smile on their face and think, there's nothing in writing task two that I, I will really, really stump me, will really, really trick me. And I know the different question types and I know what to expect. So let me give you some idea of what is on there. Question type 1A is an opinion essay. In this, you will have to discuss one opinion and one opinion only. And you can see from the example here, some people think that men are naturally more competitive than women. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Okay, some people think men are naturally more competitive than women. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Okay, so you can see that we clearly have one opinion here stated, and we have to respond ourselves to this. How do we respond to it? Well, we have to say to what extent do we agree or disagree. What does this mean? What does to what extent mean? Now, I've been teaching IELTS for over 15 years, and so often when, with my IELTS groups, a student will come up, especially the, the, the kind of earlier stages of the, of the IELTS preparation, and they will ask, what does to what extent mean? To what extent? It means by how much? To what extent? By how much do you agree or disagree? So you've got three options here as a, an IELTS student when you get a question like this. You can either agree 100%, you can either disagree 100%, or you can go some way down the middle and try and say that you know some aspects of it are good while the other aspects of it are not so good. However, um, I always advise my students, if possible, to agree 100% or disagree 100% and then support that in their in their body paragraphs. Because if you try and go down the middle way, you might end up writing a discussion essay as opposed to an opinion essay. So just be careful with that. Pick a side 100% and uh, make sure you've got good ideas to support that. Question type 1B. Again, this is an opinion. Essay. This is the second type of opinion essay you can get. Discuss two opinions. Okay, there's a lot of crossover here with discussion essays. Um, some teachers might even teach this as a, as a straightforward discussion essay. It doesn't really matter. Um, what makes this an opinion essay, in my opinion, is it clearly asks you to give your opinion as well, as you will see. So you have to discuss two opinions, not just one. You have to discuss two. Example. Films and computer games which contain violence are very popular. Some people believe they have a negative effect on society and so should be banned. Other people, however, say they are just harmless and help people to relax. Discuss both these points of views and give your opinion. So you can clearly see here that there are two opposing opinions in this part of the question here. <clears throat> You're being asked to discuss both of them and give your opinion, okay? So when you get a, a question like this, you must make sure that in your introduction that you clearly state your opinion. Uh, you have to take, take a side here, effectively. Clearly state your opinion, and then you would restate that opinion once again in the conclusion, okay? Just be careful here. You don't write this as a straightforward discussion essay. Some students might, you know, with pressure of time and everything else, they may just discuss both of these opinions and forget to give their own opinion. If, if you do that, you will lose lots of points for task response. So just be careful with that. Question type two, advantages and disadvantages. I think these are some of the, the easiest ones you can get in IELTS writing task two. You just have to give the positives and negatives of something. Let's look at an example. In some countries, young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages for young people who decided to do this. Okay, so again, you've got a statement here. 
that tells us what some people do, or it could be anything, and you have to discuss the good points and bad points, the advantages and disadvantages of this. Okay, and again, just structure your answer, answer sensibly for these. Um, body one, you will have your advantages. Body two, your disadvantages. And again, it, just keep it as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate. And in a question like this, don't give your own opinion. It's not asking for it. I'll say that at this early stage. Uh, number one, keep it simple. Number two, only give your opinion when it is asked for. Don't try to do too much. Some students panic when they just discuss things and think it's not enough and they stick in their opinion as well. Maybe they write way too much and they go over the time and it just becomes a, like a like dominoes, a, a domino effect of, of, of you know, disadvantages for you, problems for you. Keep it simple and just do exactly what they ask. Question type three is the straightforward discussion question. Here you do not give your opinion. Example. Some people feel that exercise is the key to good health, while others say a balanced diet is more important. Discuss both sides. So again, no opinion is needed. It doesn't ask you for it. So just discuss both of these sides sensibly in your body paragraphs. And the final question time is the two-part question. This question throws many students off when they go into the real test and they get this. Many students pack, practice opinion questions, discussion questions, advantage, disadvantage, etc. But they perhaps don't practice the two-part question as much. It doesn't come up quite as often, but it's very, very, very sensible to know what it is and to know what to expect and how to answer it. Example, in education and employment, some people work harder than others. Why do some people work harder? Is it always a good thing to work hard? Okay, so you can see here, you've got a statement in education and employment. Some people work harder than others. Then you've got two questions. Why do some people work harder? Okay, so that's your body one. Why do some people work harder? Your body two will be, is it always a good thing to work hard? So that's the two part question. Okay, so there are the four question types that come up in the test. And I hope this video has helped you and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.